We've all been there, haven't we? You've got this SLDF Highlander and you want to paint it up in Comstar colours. You maybe got a bit of a narrative to go with it, like, you know, maybe they found an old Star League stash and they just want to show off their new acquisition or maybe they've had it a while and it's been through the wars. So you get that white painted all over your lovely mech. Maybe you use a rattle can, maybe you use an airbrush. You find yourself thinking, well, this is easy. And then comes the time that you painstakingly paint in the black parts, which are under the white parts. And then you have to touch up everywhere that you messed up the white over black paint. And you take a step back and start to look at what you're doing. And you're immediately just hit by how flat and lifeless that white looks. You know you're going to have to shade it, but the thought of panel lining an entire mech when you've just had to touch up all the white once and after you've panel lined it, you're going to have to touch it all up again with white. Again. Gross. But what if there's a way that you can get beautiful depth and texture, keep your panels relatively clean and feel really clever and artsy fartsy at the same time. Well, the good news is that there is a way, but the bad news is that I am maybe gonna need you to buy a couple of things, depending on how well stocked your hobby cupboard is. So to give you a quick idea, here's the things that you're gonna need. Something to mix paint on that has a lip. That's very important that it has a lip. Some high quality black oil paint. Now this is a modeling brand, Abtylon 502 that I use, and they've been around for quite a long time in the scale model world. So these are a thing that are designed for miniatures. You'll need some cheap decorators, White Spirit. This stuff is about a pound or one and a half dollars for a liter bottle. You get a lot and it doesn't cost much. You'll need some gloss varnish. And again, rattle can or airbrush, it doesn't matter. As long as it's safe for plastics, that's fine. And while you're buying gloss varnish, optionally, you might want some matte varnish as well. You'll see as we get into the process, I personally advise it, but it's up to you. Now that little bundle of goodness is gonna cost you what? About 10 pounds, maybe a little bit more, sort of 15 to $20 in the USA. And I personally think if it makes painting white easier for the rest of your life, and believe me, these things will last you a really long time as a modeler, yeah, I think that's kind of fine. So what do we do with it? That's the real question, isn't it? Well, the first thing we do is in a terrible moment of filmmaking, we plan the first segment as a part where I have to go outside away from all of my camera equipment in order to spray gloss varnish all over this miniature. So yeah, I did that. And then we patiently wait for our varnish to dry. And of course, if I have to wait, you have to wait too. All right, all right, enough teasing, okay. Once that's dry, we can start gathering our ingredients together and starting to get to work. So the first thing that I want you to grab is that black oil paint, and I just want you to thin the living heck out of it using that white spirit to a kind of wash-like consistency. Something I maybe should have pointed out sooner, and I apologize for that, white spirit repels water, so make sure you use brushes for this that you don't intend to use with acrylic paints, because that just won't work. Now gather all your courage and slap that wash all over your painted white mech. Notice here that it's seeking out the recesses more and it's not really staining the surfaces nearly as much as an acrylic wash would do. Now the reason for that is just because white spirit, unlike water, has a really low surface tension. So it will naturally want to run into deep recesses and not sit on surfaces. Makes it perfect for what we're trying to achieve here. And at this point, you're probably angrily shouting at your screen saying, you absolute bastard, you've ruined my mech. This isn't revelatory at all, it just looks a mess. And, well, you'd be right. But that's because this isn't the revelatory part. The next step is... So to prepare for this next step, we need our oil wash to be dry. Not fully, completely, 100% dry, just not freely moving dry. And so the options you have available to you here are to wait for three or four hours, or if you're impatient like me, you can attack it with a hairdryer, which works really, really well. And is actually kind of a tool that I keep on hand all the time now. Don't believe me? Literally at arm's length. And now my friends, 
for some satisfaction. Watch and enjoy as with a brush dampened with white spirit, we can now use the brush almost like an eraser to gently push around, move around and remove the oil paint from wherever we don't want it. And you might notice that on some of my panels, the oil wash isn't cleaning off very easily. It seems to be kind of sticking around. Now, the reason for that is simply because I'm using a 3D printed mech. So the oil wash is moving into the layer lines of the print. If this is something that bothers you, there's a number of options. You can painstakingly scrape off the layer lines or just switch from a brush to a Q-tip to clean off the oil. And that's gonna allow you to apply a lot more pressure and sort of scrub into that layer line texture a little bit. So it doesn't need to be a problem and you certainly can get a cleaner look. However, it just so happens I like texture personally and I want my mech to look battle worn and roughed up. So yeah, I'm gonna kind of stop here. This is, this is where I'm gonna call it. Um, I did also mention the optional matte varnish earlier in this and here is where you'll wanna do that. But again, you'll want to make sure everything's dry first. So a quick blast with the hairdryer, and then you can spray some matte varnish on. And of course, from this technique, you can follow on by leaning into all sorts of complementary other things to achieve different looks. I elected to use a just off white here using Citadel's Corax white. Now that means if I wanted a really clean and sharp look to this, I could do some nice neat edge highlighting with a pure white. But for my personal tastes, yeah, I like them dirty. So I decided to do some edge weathering on mine, just using some brown paint. And here's some shots of how that looks when it's finished. Now between recording the face cam for this video and posting the finished piece to social media, there are actually a lot of reactions about that edge chipping as well. And I want to say that that is something that I would be happy to explain, it just doesn't really make a video. So I'm just going off script here for a second just to explain that to you because there was a lot of interest in it. The secret really to getting those fine chipped edge lines is just in the type of brush that you use. There's no tricks to it, it does take a lot of brush control and you can only develop brush control by muscle memory. But the brushes that I use are Rosemary & Co Series 33 Size 3s and that's the important part, Size 3s. There's a point of diminishing returns with brushes where if you paint with too small of a brush, the point is actually less fine than on a larger brush. Because of that conical shape, there needs to be enough hairs present in the brush for it to taper to a truly fine point. So most people that struggle to paint fine lines, I find the reason they're struggling is because they're using too small of a brush. Small brushes can of course be useful for getting into tight little nooks and crannies or for painting in eyes and stuff like that. But generally speaking, I do all of my work just with a size 3, whether it's base coating, fine lining, or anything in between. Right, so I suppose I better get back to my script. Let me just see where I am. Uh, ah, yeah, right. So you might ask yourself, well, if this technique is designed to be quicker and easier and stress-free and all these great things, why would you spend all that time then doing that fine edge work? And well, the answer is I'm a glutton for punishment, but also is that... I saved all that mental energy from doing the easy technique first, so I had more energy to pump into extra things to support it and make the most of it. And that's just clever painting. I mean, the model actually only took about two hours to paint. It's not anything like a masterpiece. And so that's one super quick, super easy, super stress-free technique in the bag, I suppose. It does require buying a couple of new things, maybe, but they're gonna be really useful things that will serve you. And those oil washes don't just work great over white. You can use black, brown, or any color, as long as it's high quality oil paint, and you can use those in place of your normal washes to get all sorts of really cool effects. We ended up with a really cool Highlander that is ready to bust down some doors and demand that people pay their bills. And speaking of paying bills, I also have bills to pay. So as well as liking the video and subscribing to the channel, if you do want to support the channel in any way, there's a bunch of links down in the description to show you ways that you can do that. But that's all from me for this one, folks. So I'm going to end just by wishing you happy hobby and saying thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.